Hey there, my gorgeous friends on the internet. Welcome back to part two of the SQL series. In part one, we learned everything about creating databases, just the basics of SQL, create, read, update, you know, joins, foreign keys, and stuff like that. So if you want to check that out, that's in the previous episode. And this one, we're going to talk about indexing. How does that work? I remember when I learned about indexing, people just told me, just put it on there. It'll make everything faster. But I want to talk a bit about the pros and cons, kind of what's happening also behind the scenes, hopefully giving you a bit of a deeper understanding of the subject. So. Let's get into it. I'm trying a new format. I got the iPad here, so we're going to do some drawing and stuff like that. So it's going to be fun. So let me know what you think of it. Let's get going. All right, let's have a look how indexes work in SQL. So I'll just drop a quick table here. There we go. Let's do a nice big table here. Cool. There we go. It's a bit cricket, but it is what it is. So let's say we want to store what? Let's do users. So let's do users table. Wonderful. Okay, so now we need to like decide, okay, how many columns do we want to have here? Like, what do we want to store? So let's say we want to store, I don't know, an ID, for example, maybe a name of a user and if they're subscribed to our channel or not. So we've determined we have three columns. So let's draw them out. So we have one column, two columns and three columns. Lovely. So now these columns can have different types, different types, right? So depending what you want to store. So for like, if a user is subscribed, so I'll say subbed here. You might want just true or false, right? So that would be a Boolean. So this would be a Boolean. Let's add name here as well and an ID. Cool. All right. So let's just, let's just mark there. Like this would be a serial type. This would be a, like a variable character. And this would be like a Boolean. Okay. So everything here in the blue section is our columns. All right. That's what we learned in the first episode as well. So calls. Awesome. Lovely job. Okay. And the actual data that goes inside this table is what you refer to as a record. All right. So everything here in red shall do one there. Let's make a thicker, thick red lines. Lovely. So you'd have one, two, and three here, for example, for the ID, for the name, let's do like John, Ed, and max, right? Cool. And then subs, you'd have like true, let's say false here and true here again. All right. So all of these, each individual rows here are records. All right. So we determined that in the first episode. Okay. So how does indexing come in handy? I just want to kind of drop this little table here because I want to get into how these files are saved on your machine. So whenever you create a table, whether it's a user's table, uh, I don't know, posts, uh, videos, whatever you might want to have, this essentially gets saved on your machine. Um, if you go into like your Postgres directory or whatever, you're going to see like a number of files that are named like 1928 or like two, three, four, five. Okay. It's going to be like an ID that's going to get generated for you. So the files are named like this. Okay. It's just like a sequence of numbers. And what this is, let me just draw under a big box here. All right. So these are called heap files. Now, if you heard about heap before, you might've heard it in like data structures. Uh, this is not the same. There's just the naming is the same to make it just a bit more confusing for us. So it's a heap file. Okay. So heap file contains all the records of this user stable. Okay. So every time you create a user stable or a video stable post stable, a heap file also gets generated for you. And in the heap file, you essentially have these blocks. So I'm going to have one block here. I'll just put two in here just to fit it in. Okay. So you might have a block one and a, like a block two. And what these blocks contain is a subset of those records from your user stable. So this might have the record of Max in here. It might have the record of Ed in here, of like John in here of Marcus. Okay. And this one might contain, so they're all like broken down into smaller pieces and the size of these blocks are each eight 
kilobytes. Okay, that's how it like partitions it. It just breaks it up into small little pieces. All right, and the and then you might have other names here, other records, right? So you might have I don't know T uh, for Tio, and then you might have T for Trapper Cbedia. Who else? Josh Drake coding. Okay, so basically you have a heap file that contains all the records, and then then you have these blocks that contain a subset of those records. All right, and then each item in here, they're either called like items, or you might hear like tuples as well. Tuple. Cool. Okay, so now that we kind of understand how, how that is, we can look at how indexing works. Okay, so let me just go down here a bit, and let's say we want to query maybe a name here from our user. So how would we do that? Well, you do a select, right? And then you'd say everything from, and we want to target the user's table. There we go. And then you can do a where clause. And then you can say where name, that's the column we want to target, right? Name here. equals to, let's say we want to get add. So in your heap file here, let me just kind of delete this to make a bit of space, right? You have your heap file with all the different blocks. Well, this needs to be loaded in memory. So let's just pull this up here. I'll make another little box here. And this is your memory. Slash like RAM, right? So what's gonna happen is all these blocks, block one, block two, and then if you have like thousands or hundreds of thousands of records, they're each individually gonna be loaded up in memory here. So let's say block one, block two, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's three, I'm dumb. Two, there. <laughs> so, so then it's gonna have a look at block one. Hey, is Ed there? Is Ed in this block? In our case, it is, right? So that's great. So then it would like return us uh, the, or the query and everything is good. But imagine Ed is not here, right? X, bad, no bueno. Maybe Ed is in block 49, right? Or even higher, 490. Ed lives here now. Sad. Okay. So then what happens is that you need to go through each of these blocks and blocks substantially, substantially, how do you say like one by one, right? And it's gonna load it to memory, check block one, not there, bad. Check block two, bad. Block three, blah, 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 until it gets to block 490. And it's like, oh, Ed is there, lovely. Let's return it. So this is kind of the problem. Uh, this is something called a full table scan. So you, you literally like load up all the blocks in memory until it finds uh, the right uh, record for you, okay? So now that you kind of understand how this works, we can look at how indexes work. So what would be nice is if we can like go somewhere here in between and kind of organize everything and kind of point to specific records, okay? And that's kind of what an index does. So let me just grab this table for now, for just for a second here, and I'll just move it to the side, okay? Let's make some space here. Okay, let's move it here, cool. So when you create an index, you can essentially create it on one, a specific column, okay? So you can target subbed maybe if you want, you can target name, you can target email, whatever. I do, I must note that if you do an ID, indexes are automatically gonna be added to it, okay? Or if you have the unique keyword, indexing will be done for you automatically, okay? But if not, I'll show you how you can run a command. We're gonna head to the computer and do some squilling soon. But what's happening? Well, there's like an intermediary step here that's gonna happen before. So if, when you create an index, it essentially creates another file for you. So when I run an index on name, for example, this is what's gonna happen. It's gonna create another file that's specifically gonna hold that name. So let's say John, and also the block that it's positioned in. So let's say John, in our case here, 
I think it's in block two. So it's gonna say lives in block two and the index on it. So let's say this J here, right? This J um, is John. So that would be one, two, three, right? So it's on index three. So this index essentially just holds a pointer to that record. So index at three, right? Cool. Okay, so now that we did this, I added a couple more here. So let's see, John at block two, Ed is at block one, Max is at block one, and Steve is at block two. And they all have different indexes. So this, these indexes need to be structured somehow. And one of the most popular ones that you're gonna see there is a B tree, a balance tree. Uh, there's a couple more out there, but this is probably the most popular one that you're gonna encounter. Later on, if you wanna get more advanced, I might talk about it. There's like six, seven, eight more of them. Uh, but this is like what you're gonna be dealing with in most cases. So this is gonna be represented as some sort of a tree, okay? A B tree, if you might add. So you're gonna have something like a root uh, node here at the top, right? Like that. And then this root node kind of branches out into other smaller leaf nodes. Stick with me here. I promise this is gonna make sense. Leaf node. And then you have a leaf node here as well. Okay? So what this tree is gonna do essentially is take all these indexes here and organize them. Now, in, in case we like index name here, it's gonna probably either organize them alphabetically, so in descending or descending order. So if, if you look at this, right, you have, well, let's see, we have our four indexes. So A, B, C, D, E. So that would be the first one. So that would maybe be placed in this leaf node here. Okay, so I'll just mark it here quickly like that. So I'll just say add, right? And then what would the next one be? Well, John, let's say John. Okay, so let's put John in here as well. So you can imagine like there's kind of a little check here, like a clause that say, hey, the leaf nodes that are going this way should have like A, B, C, D, E, F, F, G, H maybe, and then it's gonna be split here. Okay, so something like that, right? So the rest that would be in this category here, okay, well, what's I and J and K, L, M, N, O? Well, J is here, so that would end up in this leaf node here, J, and then of course, max as well would end up in this here, okay? So now that we have this indexes, now when you do the search, it's essentially gonna have a look from the top here. So let's say we're searching for Ed. It's gonna be like, oh, well, is it in this category here where it's I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P? And in this case, it's not. We know that our name starts with E. So it's, in, it's gonna skip this whole entire leaf node, all right? It's gonna skip all of this. And essentially, it's gonna go this way. So it can either go right way or it can go left way right so in our case our clause meets that ed is gonna head this way right so then we get into this leaf node and we find ed and ed here points to block whichever one um and the index of three for example right so this essentially is a pointer now to that record Okay, so once this gets found, this is gonna go all the way into our heap and find Ed right there, and it's gonna return it for us. Okay, so it's gonna do the smart calculation of deducting like which leaf node it should arrive to, which is gonna be much quicker than just loading everything inside memory block by block. Okay, this gets a bit more complicated if you wanna look into it, I highly advise you to. It's quite interesting, but that's kind of the essential gist of it, okay? You create these indexes that are gonna be stored in a totally separate different file, and when you do the search, it's gonna go down, down this uh, tree of, of nodes trying to find it for you, okay? And then once it finds it, it's gonna point directly to that specific record. So you might be tempted to just put index on everything. 
And you might not want to do that because like I showed you, every time you add an index, it essentially creates another file containing the pointer to that specific uh, record, right? However, let's imagine that our table here, so let's say we have a table, the size of this table, well, let's say we have like a couple of hundreds of thousands of records, okay, or like a million, whatever. It might be quite large, like eight gigabytes. Now you might be like, oh, that's still not too bad. However, for like every index that you create on this column, so let's mark that with an I here, that might also be like 500 megabytes. So now you can imagine if you put a bunch of indexes on every column, this size is going to get really, really, really large, especially once your data grows as well here, well, your index size is also going to grow. So keep that in mind, especially if you're hosting your database, you know, on a website and you might have like a 50 gigabyte limit on it. If, if that data grows, indexes can really ramp up that storage. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that sure it's fast on querying, but every time you want to insert update or delete data, you need to consider that you're updating a record. For example, you'll also basically need to update the index of that record. All right. So when you're performing maybe an update on like 500 records, that also needs to update the indexes of 500 records, which can slow down performance. So every time you do insert, update and delete, those indexes will also be modified. And last but not least, you might not even use that index at all. You might just add it on top of it and not query it at all. And now it's just sitting there uh, taking up storage space. Okay, now let me show you on the PC how we can add an index to a column and also do some performance tests on it. So I'll see you there. Okay, so let's run a quick test and see kind of the performance of having an index and not having an index. So I'm going to do a select all from users here. I just created a quick table here that just holds an ID and just random characters here. I believe I added like a thousand of them here and I'm just going to try to query a random one here. So let's say this one, CFDE, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so let's close this. So the way we do it is select everything from users where the, uh, let's see, what did I name this? I believe I named the user name equals two, and we'll pass this in like that. So let's do it, and there it is. Now, how can we actually see the performance of this? We can go back here to the beginning and add the keyword explain, analyze, like that. Analyze, there we go, so let's hit enter. Java English is hard sometimes. There we go. And there we go. And now you can have a look at this execution time, right? The planning time you can ignore, but the execution time was 0 0.07 milliseconds. So if we run this command a couple of times, you can kind of average that value out. So it's like 0 0.09 ish. Okay. So let's add an index to this now. So to create an index is actually super duper simple. You can run the command create. We're going to say index. You can give it any name you want, index username. If you don't, I believe it just generates you a random one on uh, users here. And then in the parentheses, we want to do it on the username column. Okay, so let's create that index. And if you get that create index message back, that means that it worked. Cool. So now we can go back here and try to query this again. So as you can see, we had 0 0.06. If we run this again, and run that a couple more times. Look at that 0 0.03. So we lowered that amount quite a bit. Okay, pretty much halved it, almost triple halved it. So there we go. Thank you so much for watching this episode. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know down in the comment section below if you want to see more SQL stuff. This is super fun. Uh, also check out the courses over at developbyat.com. Check out my full stack course if you want to get a good understanding of creating a full stack e-commerce website. So I'll leave that there. And until next time, bye-bye-bye.